Hey guys, it's Mac Kids in one with a video on an operating system called DOS. The reason I'm making a video on DOS is because one of our subscribers asked us to, and I'm since I'm taking a request right now, I'm making a video. So let me just get started. DOS is an operating system that Microsoft sold and made a lot of money off of, and Microsoft itself did not actually make totally DOS. DOS was based on something called QDOS which Bill Gates got from a guy named Tim Patterson. So Tim Patterson actually got QDOS. He made it based off of something called CP slash M. And QDOS stood for Quick and Dirty Operating System. So Microsoft bought QDOS, changed it to be DOS, which stood for the Disk Operating System, and then um, gave it to IBM. Now Microsoft still owned DOS, so they still made a lot of money off of DOS. And they had a great deal with IBM in this case. So Microsoft didn't actually come up with DOS. They got it from QDOS, which was made by Tim Patterson, who took it from an operating system called CP slash M. And since QDOS was far enough away from being like CP slash M, that um, they were there was no legal issue. So DOS um, is named the disk operating system because it supported floppy disks. And you could even mount floppy disks and bring them to another DOS machine, and you'd be able to read floppy disks. Now, DOS has a few disadvantages. It was actually made after Unix, so but it was made as a single user system. There's one user, and you can only really have like one program open at a time. Now, there are some ex exceptions, like if you install like a kernel add-on or something like that, you can really, but it's it's not standard to have more than one program on it open at once. There's no users and practically no security on DOS. And DOS had no way to shut it down. You quitted whatever program you were in, got all your files written, and then you shut down. And in DOS, you could only have like 20 files open at once. So something like OpenOffice, um, you couldn't, since you could only have one program open at once, you didn't have to worry about having all these files being read and written to at the same time. So life begins with a disk drive, and that's something Tim Patterson said. The disk drive is just, it was such a great leap. So I'll open up an app I have called DOSBox, and it's a DOS emulator for the Mac, um, and I think it's for other things too. So right here's DOSBox, and this is really what DOS did, was like. You could type CLS to switch to any drive. You'd type the drive name colon. All drives, um, you can only have like 26 drives or something mounted. All drives start with the letter. So normally on PCs, even nowadays, there's a C drive, and that would be like C colon to switch to there. Now with DOSBox you can mount anything as your C drive. So I'll do tilde slash desktop. So now if I type C colon, I'm in my C drive. LS doesn't work because LS is not a command. You can type DRL, DIR to, to get a directory listing. So um, in CD works. DOS isn't actually um, isn't um, made to have case sensitivity, so everything's all caps. So I'll cd to content. Content. The up arrow still works in DOS, but there's not much you can do. Unlike command prompt on Windows, DOS had a lot less features. Like color is not a command. Edit is a command. If you want to edit a text file, you type edlin, and edlin isn't even installed on most on this version of DOS. So the real way you'd edit a file. Let me just go back to my desktop. You do echo, whatever you wanted to put in the file, greater than file. And now if you do type file, it'll show you what's inside a file. And it actually even put the quotes in, so you can change what's in it. Um, and type reads a file, by the way, so that's how you read a file. Um, with this version of DOS, typing help will give you all the commands. Copy will copy a file. Dir will view directory listings. Del will delete something. Exit will, of course, exit. MD is make directory. RD is to remove directory. Type displays the contents of a, contents of a file. Um, Ren renames one or more files. Um, you can load a program into like the upper memory, so like almost the background. Choice. Um, waits for a key press and does some magic thing and version gives you the version of DOSBox since this is in DOSBox. Now the modern version of versions of DOS, so later versions of DOS will have um, 
more commands. This is a lot of commands. So, as you can see, there aren't there still aren't very many commands. Path will give you like um, where all your commands are. So I'll go back to my Z drive, and here are all the commands that are installed on this thing. So you can, I think, copy. Well, actually, there's no way. But there, there's just a lot of complex stuff in DOS. DOS is a very old thing, and there's no real reason to use it. But the major step about DOS was that DOS, you could put in another disk, and it would be able to be read. And you could have multiple disks on DOS. You could also have um, network shares. Now, DOS wasn't really made for networking, but you can now do it. So this is... Um, a little preview of DOS. DOS is a very, in my case, old and there's no reason to use it. But if you want to try out DOS, download a program called DOSBox. D-O-S-B-O-X. It allows you to try out DOS commands. So DOS is a very um, simple, old operating system. The only major thing about it that was so cool is that you can have multiple drives and you could take a drive to your friend. Files were all in, it was all non-case sensitive, just like kind of on the Mac, but everything was all caps. And file extensions were worth more than they are now. So this is DOS. In my opinion, it's a very hard, difficult to use file system. And there's no reason to use it if you don't absolutely have to. So thanks for watching our video on DOS. And thanks for watching my kids and on in general. Subscribe and goodbye.